here yet. Carol, can you introduce yourself? Carol Robot, Paul Sturdy, representative of North Pasture. Allison Scott, member of Marsh. Jane Gurney, I'm from Allison Scott. Larry Holt, uh, Central, downtown. Shauna McDowell, member at large. Alan Braille, Strip West. Cliff J. Osborne, South Asheville. Debbie Applewhite, East Asheville. Mike Lamb, I think it's. Okay, we have uh, minutes were distributed. Are there any uh, additions or corrections to the minutes? No. I move we accept the man assent. Do we have a second? I second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, right sign. Okay. Uh, next is the department the staff updates. Steve uh, Cook. Okay. Uh, so, since our last meeting, uh, EA Williams has issued. been in the past some some issues and requests on whether or not an action is, is taken uh, with regard to the finality of the action taken by the chief and that goes to the potential role of the civil service board and there have been some discussions in the past about uh, some exploration as to whether the civil service board in Asheville has been compliant with, with state requirements. I don't know if anybody from the manager's office or, or whether you, Chief Cooper, are familiar with uh, what the status of the civil service board is. And again, this, you know, this is if there were to be, and I understand it's not a decision at this point, um, but anticipate that as a possibility. I'm wondering whether or not we have the current status of the potential role of the Civil Service Board, again, since this has been an issue in the past when there have been internal uh, actions. The police department has not, no role in governing the Civil Service Board, and what their role is for the city, that's an accountable authority um, that's legislatively uh, it's determined by the law that says what their role is and what they do. So how that functions is really I have, I have no control over or anything about it. What I can say is I know that they continue that they are functional, that they continue to meet monthly. I have very little contact with them. So I can't really speak to this one. Um is that sorry it's not a good answer, but I, I can't nothing much. It's out of your jurisdiction, I, I understand and I frankly don't know the place where that kind of conversation or how to get an update. Yes, I'm looking at <laughs> so, so I'll try to address it. I think, Carol, that the role of the civil service board is determined on a case-by-case -case basis. It depends on the matters that come before it. Um, and we address it each time that there's a matter that is potentially pushed before it. And the action, I'll just as long as at least can be reflected in the minutes, I, I understand that. The, the issue has been that the local board, uh, when this last came up as an issue, and maybe a couple of years ago, uh, had not, I, I gather, and, and Gwen, maybe you know more about this than, than I do, that the board had not adopted required uh, procedures for its own activity. 
we, we maybe can talk about the CPAP. Yeah, I don't know if okay. this is CPAP. But well, I just might have implications, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the other thing is, uh, the last meeting we talked about um, our use of force policy revision. We have uh, completed that draft. We have a follow-up meeting with the, uh, with the uh, committee that we put, the work group that we put together. Uh, we posted the draft and also the final report from the Sierra Institute who uh, facilitated uh, our process. Uh, it's been posted on our website. We're open uh, to comment. And so Uh, the next step for us, uh, prior to being able to uh, finalize and implement this policy, is that we have to do training for our officers to discuss our expectations and what we actually want them to do with regard to not just de-escalation, which is the primary uh, change in this policy, but also uh, that they that it has to be addressed in our reporting of the incidents. So in other words, if you report the use of force, you have to So it's just to, well, what would what would the training have to do with changing the draft form? Policy cannot be implemented and put into effect until the officers are trained on what they're supposed to do with regard to the policy. Well, so I understand that, but will the draft change in its content? The only thing that might change it would be if some of the comments that we received now that it's posted publicly it could have some potential effect, or I could get, um, we could learn through our training that some adjustments need to be made, but sort of that is pretty much how it's going to be. Okay. Um, but again, it's not something I can implement and, and make an you know, officer live up to an expectation if they've not been trained on how to do that. I understand that. Thank you. Um, so, Has everyone um, been able to download it and take a look at it? Yeah, all that's available. Yes. And then, um, yes. Thank you. Yeah, and then uh, along the lines of the training in December, we sent three of our trainers to do uh, on the uh, ICAT training, which will be the model that we're using to train the officers in the de escalation. That's uh, uh, ICAT is integrated communications assessment and tactics. Uh, so uh, that we now have trainers that are trained in that methodology. Uh, finalize our lesson plan by the end of this month and start hopefully training uh, the officers through that training starting next month. So once we get everybody trained and they understand what it is and what the expectations are, we'll put that into effect. And what would you anticipate would be the period of time it would take to complete that training? I I can't say 100%, but my goal would be to certainly try to get it finalized. Baker District, which is east and south Ashland. Thank you. And I'm Joey Sarles with the Adam District of West Ashland. Uh, so look forward to working with you. 
from you guys on the list. All right, and then we also um, have, he's not here, uh, Charlie District, who's up north, is uh, Lieutenant uh, Chuck Sams. And then uh, we got that guy, Andy Taylor, there. No one knows him. <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, Lieutenant Lamb, who leads the charge of the, the downtown unit. sense of the process, not the product, but the process of putting that draft policy together. And is that a process that you might consider using in the future, bringing in community members, not necessarily the same ones, but having some location, to, to work with you, to work with the department in policy development? Yeah, I was very satisfied with the process, and I needed bit of debriefing at the end and I welcome anyone who's part of that group to speak up and say what their experience was but I think it was valuable and um, I certainly would work with citizens for in that process. I see the hand that responds to this today. Is it just recording? Thank you. Just recording. Oh, okay. Yeah, just recording. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. No, this is just a video. We're an uh, audio recorder. Okay. So if we see your hand up, we won't follow you. <laughs> yes, thank okay. you. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, did Eddie or Michael uh, or Mr. Perch or any of you want to comment on what your thoughts were on the process? I will, if I can be seated. Um, I went through the process and I thought it was tremendously effective and, and well done. Uh, everyone was able to give comments and I uh, particularly like the uh, scenario train, the scenarios that were done prior to the actual committee meeting mm -hmm. sessions. I was not able physically to participate, but observing those uh, scenarios and the actions that folks had after uh, going through the through the scenarios, it was eye opening. So uh, the process went well. We went through every bullet point and and fine tuned, and I gave a lot of comments, and people other gave a lot of comments. I think it was a good process, and if we went through it again, we might be able to fine tune it even further. But I, I, I'm happy with what the outcome is. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, Curry first. Um, two positive takeaways. Curry, can you stand up? Uh, please, sure. Please. You know, just speaking for myself, the two positive takeaways were one, uh, we had a nationally recognized expert from the very institute came in and uh, he facilitated and listened to us. And I thought the other thing was, it was very thorough. I mean, we had two full long days and I didn't feel rushed. I felt that we really had an opportunity to uh, listen, give input and for the group to, for the group to uh, work as a group. Okay. Thank you, Chief. The uh, next uh, uh, new business, we have a process for requesting presentations from third parties. I think there was a memo sent out on that. It's attached with the uh, agenda. And uh, everybody had a chance to look at those uh, recommendations. I, I'm not sure I, I get exactly what the recommendation is. The recommendation uh, is well, states as, as a result uh, of some uh, confusion there on the process. Presentations are sometimes placed on meeting agendas without an understanding of its content, context, or purpose. And uh, moving forward, it may be helpful that request the third party presentation to be accompanied by specific information regarding content, context, purpose, and any action requested so that CPAC can determine if any and when the presentation is scheduled or deferred until information is available. So is the intent of this to put every proposed presentation to a vote of the body? Is that what this is saying? I think if the, uh, when a request is made for a presentation, we need information about it so that uh, uh, we can prepare information or whatever response to it or, or identify any action that the committee needs to take. And, uh, and I guess uh, by consensus of the, uh, of the committee, 
this is something that uh, should is something that we could deal with. That would be fine if something needs to go to some, to some other department or even the council or whoever to just uh, ensure that it's uh, we are the appropriate committee to deal with the uh, and hear the presentation. So I'm, I'm still not entirely clear what's being proposed as a procedure. My concern is that that we as a body continue to provide opportunities for the broadest possible input and not narrow the possibilities for presentations. Well, I think we have the, the comment period and, uh, and also we have uh, on the agenda generally uh, majority consensus on, on items that we want the, uh, the city or APD to discuss or give us a report on. And that would be under the same, I think, the same type thing. I would be concerned about, there's some pretty tight restrictions that the manager's office tries to hold us to with regard to not responding to public comment, to not engaging with people who come in and public comment because appropriately there's a notice issue. If we are gonna suggest that presentations somehow morph into public comment, that will reduce further the opportunity for interaction between CCAP and members of the public. Sometimes they're just gonna be informational items, educational items, may not be requests for action or activity. Again, I think the lens, whether we look broadly or narrowly, is fundamental to how we view the role of this body in relation to the public. And I believe there's a comment. Well, I think the presentations, uh, we have one that's pending uh, that, that uh, once once the information is available and we can schedule it and have the appropriate folks here. That's, that's really what precipitated the discussion, how, how do we do this? And uh, this was uh, some of the guidelines that suggested that when, when groups or individuals want to have formal presentations, they, uh, they, they let us know what we do and so we can, can prepare or have the appropriate staff to prepare to uh, address it if, if it needs to be addressed. Agreed. So as the former chair, I'll, I'll come back on the same thing. And Alan, as the former, former chair, probably feels the same way, I'm sure that it, it, it's helpful if we know what folks are gonna be presenting so that we can prepare city staff and we're gonna need folks here and to figure out if it's something that's even relevant to CPAC because sometimes we may be doing a disservice to somebody coming to present if they're presenting thinking that this is gonna be the appropriate body and it's something someplace completely else. And I don't think it's narrowing the lens. I think if the lens is so wide and we're having everybody come and present, we're giving a mixed message because they may not they may be to talk to all the group all together. I think this is a great idea. I just, I just think it's important that we differentiate between presentations and comments. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, well, that, that's what this group yeah, 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 that was just a clarification. There, staff has not proposed anything about comments. This is all about presentations at yeah. the end of the meeting. It's been more than just the last yeah. meeting where yeah. a, there's an, a request for a presentation by an outside party. There's no discussion about what the presentation is. And so staff is, and I think actually fellow CPAC members are sitting there wondering, well, what's the issue? Who needs to be there? What is the action that we take? That's all it's intended for. It has yeah. nothing to do with the comment. That's meeting management for you guys, and this is completely up to the CPAC. And it's just a clear, because it's been really hard to figure out how to staff some of the discussions because we don't know what the conversations are going to be about. I would propose that we perhaps try to implement this again, procedure is still not clear to me. Try it for a couple of months, see what happens. Uh, again, I, I'm not really at all clear to me that this is gonna function in a broad way. I, I personally don't believe that if the group comes in that staff has to have all the answers at that moment, if indeed there are there are questions. If issues are raised by parties in the community, to me it seems perfectly reasonable to be able to say, we've heard that, 
we will come back at the next meeting if there's further conversation. I just don't want us to be a censoring body so long as we are within the jurisdiction of CPAC. And that, that's really the concern that, that is. So the recommendation, again, just speak from the staff perspective, because that's the most sure. I have, yes. is that it has nothing to do with that, Carol. It has to do with every time there's a request that has come for, for, from a third party, I think since at least since I've been here, we've been, like the last one was, I'd like to have a, a presentation by the NAACP Criminal Justice Committee. Okay, great. On, on what? Because then there's no idea about, okay, what lens the appropriate time to do it. And I'm not, I'm not picking this one, the most recent one. Because it happens, I think, in almost every one of them. There's no conversation about, okay, well, what is what's the topic by the group? By the group about what's the topic and when's the time frame to bring that? Does council ever have, does council ask for, if the council has somebody to like to present to them, do they ask for information at a time? So normally there's a conversation about, well, what's the presentation about, who is it, who is it going to be with, what's the best time to schedule? The council would do this, it's something similar. Depending on the issue, yeah. yeah. But, but that seems reasonable. To actually try to see it for a couple of months, what it means. Right. Yes. I, for one, would like to know ahead of time what the topic is going to be that they want to talk about. And secondly, I'd like to have input from parties that may be affected by that at the time that that presentation is made. And I think it's very fair to let those people know what it is and to have them here to address it. I don't want to postpone taking action on something to another meeting when we're going to certainly uh, we have, have, can have all the information here at one time and deal with it. So, well, I, I agree. I think what I see is the bottom line. We, we will be allowed to know what's coming up so we can do our homework so that we would be at least knowledgeable of of what's coming and uh and do some research so that we can possibly respond and take some action rather than deferring so that, that's the way i see it so uh 